Hey there. I'm here with yet another book haul. Can somebody help me? I mean, is it possible, booktubers, is it possible to, like, abstain from getting more books? I can't seem to help myself. I have more books than I can ever read, probably, and yet I found myself today on Amazon looking, oh, I want that book. Oh, I want that. Oh, that sounds good. I have got to put myself on a book buying ban. I have to. And I already know that I'm not going to be able to do it. You should think positive, I agree, but I know myself all too well. I mean, it's is it a sickness? I don't know. Um, are we obsessed? I don't know. Because it's like a library here. It's starting to get like a library. Um, but you know what, though? As much as I look at my shelves, and as much as my husband complains... <laughs> about all the books. I know that there are those of you out there that have way more. I mean, I see your bookshelves. You've got like, some of you have like five bookshelves on the video. So maybe I shouldn't feel so guilty about it. I don't know. What are your thoughts? Let me know. But okay, this book haul, they had in the school district here, they had, after the flood, um, they managed to get into this program, the school district, to get kids and teachers free books. And they also offered the community free books, too. And they had a ton. And teachers were able to take, like, whole sets of books. And, like, I went when it was, like, almost over. Like, they were picked through, but they still had a lot of books left. Apparently, they had, like, thousands before I ever got to go there. Um, because, you know, the, the students and teachers and their families got to go first. But still, there was a ton left. Um, and so I got some. I got multiple copies of some for, like, gifts and maybe a few giveaways. But right now, I'm only showing you one copy of each different one that I got, okay? And these are nice books. It was through Publishers Clearinghouse that they got into this program. And I thought, what the heck, yeah, why not? And some of them sounded really good. And some of them sound like they're more for adults than kids. I think they're more for the, you know, young adults, like, you know, junior high, more high school even, you know. Um, some were middle school level. But I picked some that I thought that I, was, I would enjoy. So here we go. Okay. This first one, The Infects. I got a bunch of these. I'll be giving away and giving out gifts to different people in my family. All right, so the Infects is apparently zombies because it says, Zomb rule number four, survival is for the ruthless. Everyone else is a hippie poet. <laughs> I don't know, that amused me. For some reason. Okay, so it says, stuck in the wilderness with a bunch of other juvenile delinquents on an inward trek, it doesn't seem that things could get worse for 17-year-old Nick Nero Soul. But they do. Overnight. Nero's counselors turn into flesh-eating maniacs and start chowing down on his fellow miscreants, like a monster movie come to life. As in any classic monster flick worth its salted popcorn, colossal carnage sends survivors rabbiting into the woods while the mindless horde of infects shambles, moans, and drools behind. These kids have seen the movies. They know the rules. Unfortunately, knowing the rules isn't going to be enough. The infects is a genre buster. Yes, it's a fast-paced gore fest, but it's also an incisive documentary on the evil that lurks within each of us. And it also sounds like it has humor in it, too, to be honest, guys. Okay, and this is by Sean Bodewin, and, um, yeah. Sounds pretty good. All right, so the Infects. Infects. All right, now, I like the Maze Runner movie, so sue me. I like them. And I'm looking forward to the next main run, uh, main runner, Maze Runner. And I saw that they had like a few of these left, and I thought, why the heck not? Just for fun. So I got a copy of Inside the Maze Runner, The Guide to the Glade. Just as like a conversation piece, you know? All right. This one sounded really, really good. The Murdstone Trilogy, a novel. 
And I thought to myself, this sounds like an adult book, but yet it's by an award-winning young adult author. Okay, but it sounds more like it's for adults. But here we go. Philip Murdstone is in trouble. Flat broke. His star has waned. No one wants his novels about sensitive teenage boys. So his ruthless agent, Minerva Sinch, convinces him that his only hope is to write a sword and sorcery blockbuster. High fantasy specifically, or to be more precise, fantasy with a PH. Unfortunately, Philip, allergic to the faintest trace of anything Tolkien, is utterly unsuited to the task. In Philip's darkest whiskey-fueled hour, a dwarfish stranger comes to his rescue. But the deal Philip makes with pocket welfare turns out to have Faustian consequences. The Murdstone Trilogy is a richly black comedy from a writer without peer. It sounded good. This sounded right up my alley. Humorous. And like, you know, I always like the Faustian type of things. And this is by Mal Peet. His first novel was Keeper. Okay. Alright then. So, that's going to be a good one. Okay. This just is so dang pretty. I know it's about monsters, but look at this cover. And look how thick it is. This is an anthology of beastly tales, okay? So it's short stories and involves beasts. And look at this, this thing. I don't know what it is because uh, it has wings, okay? So you can't just say it's a werewolf. It's on top of this dude here. And hey, you know, I'm into horror. I think that this would be excellent. And just look at it. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful, gorgeous book. Okay. Now, this one is beautiful and gorgeous, too. And you know what? I've got to stop buying... Well, this I didn't buy. Okay? Like I said, these were for free. Okay? Um, and I'm sorry. Anything that's for free, why not? Um, but I noticed that I'm starting to fall into the trap of picking out books that are pretty. I don't know why I'm doing that. Okay? Like, I'll look at something and go, Oh, I want to order that just because it's a pretty book. Which I kind of think, no offense is stupid, but yet I still do it. But this was free, okay? So look how pretty this is, all right? And it's called The Ring and the Crown. And I don't even know if I'll even read it, but I have it. Look how gorgeous. It's by Melissa de la Cruz, okay? And it's called The Ring and the Crown, as I said. She's a New York Times best-selling author. And it says, magic is power, and power is magic. So you probably get the idea of what kind of book this is, okay? Fantasy. Woman protagonist, probably. Okay. Um, Evercrossed, a kiss by an angel novel. So I read the back of it, and it says, first love never dies. And it's been a year since Ivy's boyfriend, Tristan, died. They're both, they've both moved on, Tristan to the other side of the afterlife, and Ivy to sweet, wait a minute, I lost my place, and Ivy to sweet, dependable Will. Now Ivy's heading to Cape Cod, hoping to leave the horror of last summer behind. She wants nothing more than to be on the beach, sip lemonade, and hang out with her friends, but then a car crash ends Ivy's life. As she floats to the beyond, looking down on the life she's left behind, Tristan breathes life back into her with a passionate kiss. She wakes up in the hospital, surrounded by Will and her family. But all she can think about is the love that she lost. Okay, so Tristan, while she was in the afterlife, brought her back to life with a kiss. Okay, and then, but memories aren't all that's come back from the past, and this time Ivy's not sure love will be enough to save her. Uh, that sounded interesting. Like I said, free. Okay? I hope it's not like, look at the cover. That's like reminiscent of Twilight type books. That's a pretty flower. But I'm going to tell you something. I don't want anything to do with anything like Twilight. So we'll see. But I figured if it's free, if I read it and I hate it, and it's excruciating for me to get through, then I just don't have to read it. Nobody's going to force me to read it. And I won't feel guilty because it was free. 
So I thought I'd just give it a try. Okay, now this one, Swear. Another pretty one. Okay. Some love books. Oh, excuse me. Some love bonds. Some love destroys. Okay. A promise broken. A bond betrayed. You get the idea what kind of book this is. Okay. Just by looking at the cover. I'll do a book talk on it if I like it and I end up finishing it. Because like I said, anyway, we could be 80 before I ever get to some of these books. Okay. Deadly Little Voices, a touch novel. Now, I don't want to get into 50 different series, so I'm just going to hope that some of these books that are in a series, I could just read one as a standalone. This is called Deadly Little Voices, a touch novel. Okay? Now, Deadly Little, that attracted me. All right, and this is by Laurie Faria Stolop. Okay? Camelia Hammond thought her power of psych Psychometry gave her only the ability to sense the future through touch. But now she has started to hear voices, cruel voices, telling her that she'd, be she'd be better off dead. She's afraid about her mentality. Her aunt is deranged. I mean, this sounds really dark and kind of horrorish, but like, look at the pretty cover. If you read the back of this book, it doesn't sound anything like the cover portrays it. The line between reality and dream are consistently blurred. She begins sculpting. And then when she sculpts, she gets frightening premonitions that someone's in danger. But who is the intended victim? And how can Camellia possibly help the person when she is on the brink of losing her own sanity? And this is like a whole series. Sounds good. Like I said, it doesn't match the cover, does it? Okay, and then Persona by Genevieve Valentine. I suppose I could have got that book that I was asking Gerard if that was from him in the other video. That could have been something that I got from there. I don't know. All right. Persona by Genevieve Valentine. Assassins, abduction, welcome to the future of diplomacy. Silvana Sapaki is a failure in the International Assembly. She's not charming on camera, which is crucial for a face. Public image is 90% of diplomacy. They tell you right from the beginning... All right, you know what? My mind, I'm, I'm having little uh, brain farts here. Let me go back and start reading this again, okay? Because what's happening is, is like I'm reading it and then I'm forgetting that I'm talking to you guys on camera and I'm just getting into reading the thing and <laughs> not doing what I'm supposed to do in my video. So here we go. I'm going to start this again, okay? All right. Suyana Sapaki is a failure in the International Assembly. She's not charming on camera, which is crucial for a face. Public image is 90% of diplomacy. They tell you right from the beginning. The United Amazonian Rainforest Confederation has been the site of scandal, so she's short on allies. It's a system designed to make you useless, but she's fighting. People back home trust her, and she has a country to save, one way or the other. Daniel Park fled home to become a snap because joining the last of the free press sounded noble before he was broke. On a hunch, he's picked C-lister Suyana Sapaki for his first outing. He thinks she's hiding something that's worth money to the right people if he catches it on camera, like her assassination attempt. On the run from someone who wants her dead, shadowed by someone she can't trust, Soyana will risk everything, everyone, to save her diplomatic ties. It's her only chance to control the future of her people, and she has promises to keep. The Assembly has declared her persona non grata. That's what they think. So that sounds really good. A new kind of heroine. Okay. 
So these are the books that I got from that, I guess you could call it a book giveaway. Um, yeah, like I said, it was from Publishers Clearinghouse. And I'll tell you what, I think I'm done doing videos for the night because I'm having too many brain farts. <laughs> okay? So this was from um, a Publishers Clearinghouse uh, book program for the community. And I'm signing out. Bye-bye.